Here's a question. Do I have to see all the past Marvel movies to understand the Avengers? Because that ain't happening. On a Thursday in late April, the White House press briefing room was packed. Press Secretary Sarah Sanders strode to the podium. The daily press briefing began. What flavor ice cream does the president like most? Asked one participant. How much vacation does the president get? Asked another. <laughs> the questioners were kids. The children of the reporters who covered the White House, to be specific. It was all part of Take Your Sons and Daughters to Work Day, an attempt to show kids what their parents, you know, actually do on a daily basis. What's ironic about Sanders holding a press briefing to simulate a normal day at the White House is that, well, it's not at all normal. Sanders, with a major assist from President Donald Trump, has effectively destroyed the concept of the daily White House press briefing, and maybe for good. Check this out. The last time Sanders held a, you know, real press conference for adults was March 11th. Through the end of April, Sanders had held only two White House briefings in the past 100 days. Over the past 200 days, Sanders briefed a total of five times. In the past 300 days, just 15 total briefings, one every 20 days. Here's another way to think about it. So far in 2019, the White House press secretary held a single press briefing in January and March. She held this many in February and April, zero. Important sidebar. The first White House press secretary was a guy named George Ackerson, who was hired by President Herbert Hoover way back in 1929. The press briefing room, which sits atop what was once the White House swimming pool, was created 40 years later. In the mid-1990s, Bill Clinton press secretary Mike McCurry began the practice of the press secretary taking questions on a daily, close to it, basis. Now, none of what this White House is doing is accidental. Trump has been privately grousing about the tradition of a White House press secretary talking to the media on a regular basis, almost from the day he came into the office. And even in the early days of his administration, it was clear where we were headed with all of this. I don't know, you keep bringing up negative. You only want to talk about negative. <laughs> Why don't you bring up the positive? The press has treated them absolutely unfairly. General Flynn is a wonderful man. I think he's been treated very, very unfairly. Sheriff Joe was very unfairly treated. Jared's done an outstanding job. I think he's been treated very unfairly. He says, you know, the media has been extremely unfair to me. Quote, I think that the press office should be available as they are to give the press responses and updates as to what's going on at the White House. But I think the daily briefing is sort of worth re-examining, former Trump White House press secretary Sean Spicer said way back in May 2018. Quote, the briefing has become more of a show than an outlet of information for the media. End quote. This was the largest audience to ever witness an inauguration, period both in person and around the globe. Before we begin, I know that myself and the press have gotten off to a rocky start. All right, all right, all right, all right. In the sense, when I say rocky start, I mean it in the sense of Rocky the movie because I came out here to punch you. So why the animosity toward the press briefing? Start here. Trump cares deeply, deeply about how he is perceived by the media. He's a total cable TV junkie and is more acutely aware than any modern president what the collective journalistic establishment is saying, writing, and thinking about him. Now, add to that this. In Trump's mind, he is his own best spokesman. So why farm out the job of managing his all-important image to some staffer who won't make the points to the media as well as the big boss man could? Combine all of that with Trump's politically motivated attacks on the press. His base dislikes the media, so bashing the media is an easy win for this president. And you get to where we are now. The daily press briefing isn't even a monthly occurrence anymore. How has the White House been able to strangle a decades-long tradition with very little attention or even less outrage? Simple. Most people, they just don't care. If you hate Trump, you are likely fine with the lack of daily press briefings because, well, all Sanders and, by extension, Trump's broader White House do is use them as a platform to lie and mislead. So why give them that opportunity? If you love Trump, you probably also loathe the media. Why should Sarah Sanders subject herself to a bunch of biased reporters trying to show off for the cameras by using their questions to, ah, uh, dunk on her, ah, uh, dunk. 
Plus, Trump talks and tweets more than any past president. Why do you need a quote from a press secretary when you can get it from the president himself? Huh? And even if you're somewhere in that shrinking middle of people who neither love nor hate Trump, you are likely far more focused on paying your mortgage or making sure your kids are safe at school and home, or hell, even whether Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen can co-rule Westeros one day. I think they can. In short, no matter where you come down, you don't spend your days wondering why Sarah Sanders hasn't talked to the media in almost two months, or worrying about when she might talk to the media next. I get it. I'm a reporter. I am hyper aware of all of this stuff. But let me make one thing very clear. You should, should care about the fact that Trump, with help from Sanders, has effectively ended regular interactions between the White House and the press who cover it. The main reason you should care is simple. You and me pay Sarah Sanders' salary. I'm assuming, of course, that all of you pay your taxes just like I do right on time. Hello, IRS. That fact means that when you get right down to it, Sanders works for the American public, not for Donald Trump. The job of press secretary is to inform the people through the media of what the president is saying, doing, and thinking at any given moment. Sanders isn't doing that. She's not even coming close. For those who say it doesn't matter whether Sanders talks to the media because Trump engages with the press more than any past president, I say this. Asking questions of the president is a very different animal than asking the press secretary questions. Donald Trump can ignore questions. He can refuse to answer them. It's more difficult to follow up when questioning the president than when asking questions of the press secretary. It goes on and on. There are just differences. It's apples and oranges. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. The elimination of the daily press briefing may not seem like a big deal to you, but it's a step in the wrong direction. A step toward less access and less accountability for an increasingly powerful president. And it's a very slippery slope toward something that doesn't look at all like the democracy that we all love. And that is the point. We make new point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Catch them all.